Inca called their empire the land of the four quarters. It stretched over 2,500 miles and was rich in minerals. It varied from high mountain peaks to arid desert with lush jungles in between. Its empire was said to have controlled 10 million people, all speaking upwards of 100 different native languages. In 1530, it was the largest empire on earth. Amazingly, the Spanish conquistador in 1532 managed to execute the last emperor, Atahualpa, in an amazingly outnumbered battle. The history of the Inca civilization was destroyed in the battles, so unfortunately, most of what could have been learned from this sophisticated civilization has been lost forever. The mystery and allure of the Incas has fueled the passions of countless explorers ever since. This is our story of myself and some friends going on our own exploration on bikes in search of a lost Inca road that Manco Inca took when he fled after first revolting the Spanish colonial rule. The route that we are going to be taking is the exact footsteps Manco Inca took when fleeing the Spanish. On our route, we hope to find some Inca ruins and also hope to discover a long lost road which our guide, KB, believes is still there, hidden somewhere in the Andes. A number of things could go wrong and it's really going to take a team effort and a whole crew to kind of cooperate and come together to pull this one off. Our crew here consists of three mountain bikers, one cinematographer slash photographer. We got one guide, assistant guide slash cook, and then we got a bunch of porters and we got some guys carrying uh, some supplies on some horses. It's my 11th year guiding clients here in the mountains of Peru. This is the place that makes me feel like uh, being uh, Indiana Jones, you know. This is a unique trip on a lot of fronts. Um, this is definitely a lot deeper than any mountain bike trip I've done. One thing about this trip that makes it so much different than any other mountain bike trip is the fact that we're actually going in deep, self-sufficient, um, and this this actual movie movie project that we're doing, you know, we're doing it ourselves. This is us exploring. This is no support crew. There's no helicopters. We get hurt, we're dragging each other out of there. This is as real as it gets, and we're exploring deep as it gets in Peru. None of us really know what's in store, so that's all I gotta say, follow along. Making our way into the mountains from the uh, valley bottom. It's a long, windy, super exposed road cliffs on the one side the whole way and we're gaining some elevation. We first set out on the peak high above the city of Tambo and descend into the dense jungle, unaware that our day was going to be such a long one. The Inca road that I believe exists is gonna follow what you can see is the snake of this valley over to where those clouds are misting. Uh -huh. You can actually see it and it's then gonna backtrack to Machu Picchu. That road has never been done, it's never been completed, but I believe it exists. We are retracing today the exact to the meter steps that Manco Inca, who I do like to call the Luke Skywalker of the Incas, this is the route they took. The Spanish were close behind them, maybe one day behind on horses. The Incas came this way. Later we stumbled upon, it was, it was her and her husband and her son all living together up in the mountain. She was 98 years old and, you know, nothing, nothing really to worry about out there. You okay, buddy? Holy shit, I just fell off a freaking cliff. Got my bike's right behind me here. Step my foot off the trail because I was driving, riding with my camera around my neck. Just a little bit of brush there, foot went right through it. Free fall, full free fall, upside down off a cliff. Hey Garrett. Hey bud. Woo. Upside down, bro. I'm lucky. How are we gonna do this? That was ridiculous. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I gotta be way more careful. Bushes here, saved my life. I realize this train is humbling. I mean, it's, these trails, they're Inca trails that they've built, a lot of them, and the rock walls that they've stacked up rocks to make it actually passable because it's cliffs that are completely vertical that just go down to rivers that you can barely even see below. And we're riding along the top of it. KB! We 
decided to venture on down this uh, old ancient Inca road to kind of find um, these old ruins that supposedly are down here, and uh, we kind of got kind of got mixed up in uh, the middle of the bushwhack. And that is the Inca road. And if this there was could noon, be a ramp right there that goes straight to the highway. If it was noon, we'd go down, but I don't think we have a choice. I think we have to go up. Back. Okay, let's do it. A little bit of a river crossing. A little bit of a river crossing. Kind of a find a dry route or we'll have to take the shoes off and keep those dry because we're going to need those day one. On our first day, we stumble upon some ancient Inca ruins that we could quite possibly be the first gringos to lay eyes upon. This definitely classic trapezoid. So this would, be, would have been like a house or something? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I would be shocked if more than a dozen non-Peruvian locals have ever been here. I'd be shocked. Is there more? Probably. Probably. Where, the, where there's one, there's more. Probably there's more. hundreds. Yeah, it's not like one Always. person lived here. Yeah. Finding that ruin was a thrilling experience, and it stoked our fire to see what the rest of the journey had in store for us. So we got lost. Keep tracking. We uh, got caught at night, and bushwhacking a little bit here. We got a basic idea where we need to go, but uh, it's probably been a good 12 hour hike so far, day one. That was real. That was something that, that's, this is the kind of stuff, just going deep and not just taking the safe route that I've wanted to do for a while. And, and this is the crew to do it, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... This fortress behind us is uh, Vitcos, and it's, um, this is like the primary hub, really. Uh, of like the Inca, Inca fortresses. So as legend has it, this uh, this courtyard right here is the spot where Manco Inca, the last Inca emperor, was killed, assassinated. This is like his party plaza, you know, and they, allegedly he had huge parties here. We got sighting of our uh, the pass we got to get over. It looks far away from here. So usually in the mountains, if it looks close, it, it's far away, and if it looks far away, it's really far away, so. We're definitely gonna have an adventure on our hands. You know, it's hard enough for us just hiking at this elevation. Can't imagine what it, what it would have been like for those guys to build this, just all terraced up right on the edge of this huge cliff, and it's just absolutely unbelievable. Just got to the summit. Feeling pretty damn weak. Kind of lightheaded right now. Nice work. It's our highest point for the day. We reached our highest point for the day and finally got a glimpse of the area that KB believes the lost in Corot is. So day four, uh, we've had a pretty uh, hard last couple days. Yesterday we got into camp super late, super wet, it was raining, I had to set up camp, and then uh, at the end of the day, our uh, fearless guides, it looks like they want to go actually go down to that valley bottom and then try to find this lost Inca road that goes up and over through those mountains and up through those passes. And I don't know about you, but uh, it's pretty freaking high right here. And uh, I think we're at 14. Yeah, Graham. 14 and a quarter right now, so air is pretty thin, and, and we're already super beat. Like, the last three days, it's pretty much just canned us. Like, like a bunch of us are all sick, and... You guys are going slow. <laughs> well, I'll count on that for today, too. No, really, like, even without the filming, like, you gotta walk a little faster. Kind of do a little bit of exploring and head up this old way and try and find a, kind of a lost Inca road. Uh, hasn't really been seen too much by too many guys, a couple of locals. 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 years ago, so, you know, hopefully the weather cooperates. Yeah, I know. We hiked up this ridge in order to find this lost Inca road, and we got to a viewpoint on this, uh, on this ridge line where we could actually see some old remnants of an actual old cut of a road. And we're just sitting here waiting for some horses to, uh, to see if the horses are gonna come up, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it's pretty cool to be able to actually stand up here and see, you know, that like there is an ancient, ancient road. It's just too old and hasn't been used. And, and plus it looks like it actually goes up into like, man, 19,000 feet. There's a glacier. Of, like up top there and potentially even a glacier. So 
Uh, our crew is pretty apprehensive of going any further in this weather. No se puede subir por acá. Eso uh -oh. es baloso, piedra, bicicleta no. A la vez no conocemos nosotros por dónde vamos a caminar. Eso es el problema. El señor de los caballos está en los trabajos. We're up here now. We're just getting colder and wetter, and we're not making any progress. So I think it's time to pull it. It is what it is. It's pouring rain. Sometimes the mountains don't cooperate with your goals, but regardless, it's going to be wet and miserable. There's no exams or buts about it. Why do I not have rain pants right now? We decided to take an alternate route to our destination, Choki Corral. Lots of hiking. It's a bike hike. We were in the jungle for sure. Up on top of this ridge and off this little plateau where this uh, cool little family's got a little uh, household. Yeah, okay. Boom. Yeah, I <laughs> went on that. It's probably one of the better uh, downhill single tracks we've ever had. Um, it almost looked like a pike park uh, trail, to be honest. Um, the, the dudes that live up in there actually just uh, picked side hill all the way across, so it's a uh, really nice trail for the mules and uh, the donkeys and whatnot. So uh, perfect for us. Nice shreddable uh, trail. Mario, you're the man. It's a push, but you know, like it's you're either gonna realize you're not as strong as you thought you were, and you got stuff to work on, or you realize that you're stronger than you thought you were, and that's like. That's a pretty powerful motivator, you know, when you have that mental edge and you're like, man, I can push through this. How's that? First time you had intestine? It's got a different taste to it, doesn't it? So we're up in this tiny little town way up in the mountains in the uh, in the Andes and we come across these uh, these trail ponds. So we asked uh, if they're for sale and they said, heck yeah. So we uh, were fishing up a couple trout for dinner. It's been a while since we had some protein on the menu, so uh, we're all pretty pumped. It's going to be good tonight. <laughs> Made our way up onto this terrace here. That's where we camped last night and now we're booking it up over this next pass. We got about a three and a half, four hour push up over this pass, and then we're gonna have a huge descent down to the river below. Yeah, just looking forward to get over this so we can uh, get some fun riding in. The pass to Choque Corral has been a never ending series of huge climbs followed by some of the most amazing descents that we have ever ridden. The daily transition from chilly mountain peaks to rich jungles, finally ending in arid desert landscape, was a constant challenge. It pushed our mental and physical boundaries further than we knew we were capable of. Had a little uh, soak in the river, about the first wash in about seven or eight days. Now we're hiking up and it feels like a completely different climate. It's just scorching out here, ready to faint and fall off this side of the trail here. I'd say it's got to be at least 30 degrees. Yep. End of day seven, we made it to these uh, these ruins here that uh, I guess have been uh, just uncovered recently. They didn't really know they were here for a long, long time, and I, we're super lucky to get to come here because I guess not a lot of people do, and we're going to spend the night up here, and it's just a beautiful way to end the day. Getting pretty lost out here and then finding ourselves. Spiritually, mentally, <laughs> physically, and uh, we just keep on going. We're just animals. We spent the night on these agricultural terraces, um, just on the backside, and it's kind of controversial as to as to which way the entrance is to this ruin. Most people come from the other side. It's more convenient from Cusco, but we kind of came in the accepted backside. Choque Corral is a super sacred rest place for the royalty of the time, and. Uh, I believe they came the way we came. I believe they came through Juan Cancalle. Cotacoca certainly was on their route, although it may have been more of a service station and just a 
minor military space. I don't believe it was the main way that they came, but we now know that they did come that way. Really cool system of aqueducts and irrigation. Um, you know, they managed the water straight down from the glaciers. Oh yeah, it's a serious push up those stairs. Finally reaching Choke Corral was awesome. We battled our way through half a dozen large climbs and descents, riding some of the most breathtaking single track to arrive at this ancient city that is a must-see on any adventurer's list. Potentially the last day we can make it out of here, back to civilization, day nine. There you go. Got a wicked descent ahead of us and a bit of river crossing and then a huge hike up the other side to the village where we'll uh, end the trek. We're just at the bottom of this descent for the morning and uh, there's this little cable trolley to get across the uh, river. So we're just pulling it in so we can load our gear and start our hike on the other side to civilization. Last line. Pretty happy. It's all over pretty much. We got this wicked single track. We get to rip <laughs> and we get to sleep for a long time. I'm more than ready. You ran out of water a ways back. Yeah, I'm dehydrated. That's one of the hardest hikes of my life, I must say. I mean, over the last nine days, we basically pushed, pulled, dragged, crawled, bushwhacked through you know, an elevation that's equivalent to summoning Everest twice from sea level in the last nine days. It was, it was a heavy physical exertion. It was, uh, it was a heavy mental exertion. You know, I think I learned more in the last nine days about the mountains than I have in, in years. I think this is putting us all on a whole new level. This is a, almost a bit of a quantum leap because we hit new zones. We put tire tracks where they haven't been put before. We found undocumented ruins. This wasn't a trip that was planned for six to eight months. This wasn't a trip that was designed for a magazine article or anything like that. It just kind of organically came together. It turned into a, you know, an, an incredible experience for me. This trip was such an amazing adventure. We learned more about ourselves and the mountains than we have in years. On this trip, we got a unique perspective of the amazing culture and the hardships these people face here in the Andes. We have a new ground respect for the descendants of the Children of the Sun.